the Lord God Almighty. Make his path God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. My loving greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is David Turner, and I want to welcome you to this week's program, The Gospel is the Power. Amen? This week, I want to share with you the second part of our message that God placed upon my heart we began last week entitled, My God Will Bless You. Be encouraged. We see in the book of Exodus chapter four, verse 11, how God is speaking to Moses and saying, but I'm ill of speech, I can't speak. But God says to Moses, did I not make the deaf and the mute, the blind, and the lame. Precious child of God, so many times we're waiting to move into the blessing of God, thinking we have to prepare, thinking we have to do great things for God. The Bible says, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10, in our weakness, he is strong. Book of Joel chapter 3, verse 10, let the weak say, I am strong. Precious child of God. You see, God did not come. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. He didn't come for the wise and the noble, but the poor, the despised, and the weak. We are greater use to God in our weakness. In our weakness, he works through our lives and he's glorified. Don't think, oh, I can do this and I can do that. I can go do great exploits for God. When I received the gift of miracles and healings in my life, I wanted to run here and run there and have this meeting and see God's name lifted up. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, settle down, son. Sit in my presence. Know my word. Be in my presence. Abide in me. You can't do anything for me. Only my spirit dwelling within you will glorify my name through you. Amen. It's only in our weakness Nobody trained me to speak. Nobody trained me to stand before people and preach. I haven't been to a school of, for theology. I don't have a doctorate or a master's in theology. I sit in the presence of God and I pray and the Holy Spirit speaks through my life. Amen? It's the simple. Paul said, I don't come to you, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, and 5, with the words of the wisdom of man, with the, but with the simple message of the gospel and a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's your weakness that God can use in your life. Embrace that weakness. Hallelujah. Book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 12. God said to Moses, I will be your mouth. I will speak for you. 1 Peter 4, 11. When we speak, it says, speak the very oracle of God. When we speak the word of God, God will back you up in that word because Isaiah 44, 26, it says, God establishes the word of his servant. Amen? Hallelujah. Book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 16, God says to Moses, you will be like a God to Aaron. What a power he put upon Moses. Amen? Exodus 4, verse 17, he says, take the rod and go do the miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah. 
God said, Joshua 3, 5, Sanctify yourself, for I will do the miracle signs and wonders in your midst. In the power of God, we can do the miracles. Hallelujah. God said, we see in Exodus chapter 4, verse 19, God says, don't be afraid to go back. All the people who wanted to kill you have died. We see from this point, and we could go on and on about Moses and God's relationship, but how faithful God was. He delivered them with the miracle signs and wonders from Egypt. He parted the Red Sea. He gave them a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Every one of these is a full message we can talk about in the future. He gave them water from the rock. He turned the bitter water into the sweet water. He gave them the manna for 40 years in the desert and sustained them. Precious child of God, my point is this. God who makes the promises, my God who cannot lie, will bless you. Same blessings he poured out on Moses that he poured out upon the Israelites. My God wants to pour out upon you today. Hallelujah. Second thing, precious people of God, we must think that God never relents. God never repents. Amen? So my God, who never relents, never repents, will bless you. So many people in this world, it's the human nature, they make the promises to people, and then they quickly break the promises. And at best they say, sorry, sorry, and move on. But God is not like that. God is not like a man. He never says sorry. He never relents. He never repents. Amen? Book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 29. It says that the gifts and the calling of God upon your life are irrevocable. He never relents. He never repents. Now, please don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. Many people think they see a man of God and they see the gifts operating and they think, oh, that, God, that man must be walking with God because they see the gifts. Sometimes people in their own lives, they think, oh, I must be right with God because the gift is operating. But we must understand that the gifts and calling are irrevocable. But that doesn't mean that we can come against God and walk in our own way, do whatever we want, and God's going to bless it. We must understand, it is not just the gifting and the calling that's important. It's the anointing of God that is most important upon your life. The anointing of God, the presence of God in your life is what's important. You see, Isaiah 10, 27, it says, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. So the anointing of God is working with the gifting that he's placed in your life to set the people free. The anointing is the spirit of God. Again, 2 Corinthians 3, 17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So the freedom comes because the spirit comes and breaks the yoke and he works through your gift to deliver the people. Precious people of God, I remember one time I was in India on one of my first crusades. Seeing the glory and the power and the miracles, I remember after one night I had such a fight with the enemy. And it's amazing when you face the demonic and the enemy, it's amazing how you realize how unarmed you are, apart from the protection of God. It's like that in every moment of our lives, we're just not thinking about it and being grateful for it. That we are undone, we are destroyed, apart from the grace of God holding your life together. For that alone, we have to be eternally grateful to Jesus Christ. But one night after I saw this tremendous attack, I fought the enemy, we got the victory, it was exhausting, and easily I could have stepped into fear, seeing the tremendous power of the enemy and the powers of darkness. But I also saw a greater victory in the miracle signs and wonders that God allowed for me to move in. And I said that night, I asked my spiritual father, I said to him, I said, is the enemy afraid of my gifts? And I'm, I'm hoping he's going to say, oh yes, David, he is, so you need not fear. That's the answer I was hoping for. But he looked at me and he said, David, the enemy's not afraid of your gift. He will destroy you and he will not only break your gift, he will use it against you and destroy you with it. That wasn't very comforting. But he said what the enemy's afraid of is your prayer 
and your holiness. Walking in holiness doesn't mean we're holy. It means we walk in the holiness of God. When you walk, as a man has two legs that he walks on, you walk every day in the prayer and you walk every day in the holiness before God with a pure consciousness. Consci that doesn't come from our works. It comes from our meditation upon Jesus Christ and our faith in him. As you walk in the holiness, the prayer, the pure consciousness, the anointing of God is upon your life. That anointing combined with the gift of God exercised in your life, that's when the devil will flee and run away. Just because you have a gift, that won't stop the enemy for one second. Amen? So we must understand and not rely upon the gift itself. It's relying upon the presence of God. King David said, the wisdom of what he said, Psalm 27, verse 4, Oh God, one thing I ask, you take not your presence from me. Every day, fearfully before the Lord, oh God, I ask, please don't take your presence from me. Apart from the presence of God, the gifts of miracle signs and wonders means nothing. Even if the gift can go on, because God will not revoke it, he will not relent, he will not repent, but it is his presence that is the true treasure, as Jesus Christ said. The greatest blessing we can have is to know God, to know Jesus Christ, to know the Holy Spirit. Amen? then the anointing will be on your life. The gifts will be exercised in combination with the power of God. God never relents. He never repents. He does not take away the gifts and the calling that's upon your life. No matter what your past, no matter what the sin, no matter where you've done, it doesn't matter. Your life, your blessing in Jesus Christ begins today. Hallelujah. We see King David in the Bible. We see in... The book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 28, verse 29, verse 37, in all the places, God promises King David, he says, my presence, my grace will always be around you. He made that promise to King David. Hallelujah. We see in the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 10, and book of Hebrews, also in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29, in both the places, you'll see that the grace is the Spirit of God. So his Spirit, God's saying, I won't take my Spirit, will always be all around you. God who never relents, he never repents. What happened? We see King David, how he committed the sin with Bathsheba. We see his son Solomon, even though God warned him, he married the foreign wives. They committed the sin, but even with the sin... You see, God never relents, never repents. He fulfilled his covenant and his promise with King David. Hallelujah. We see the Bible says in Psalm 143, verse 8, King David is saying, Oh God, I get up in the morning early. Cause me to hear the word of your grace. Cause me to hear the word of your grace. Psalm 23, he says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Amen? So we see Psalm chapter 84, verse 11. It says, those who walk upright, they will receive the grace from God. How God gave King David such a grace, even the sin in his life, but his heart, Acts 13, 22, he had a heart after God. So because of this, because of this God, he fulfilled who never repents, never relents. He fulfilled his covenant to give him a thousand years of blessing upon him. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 15 to 17, that for those who believe God, the greatest blessing, they will get a thousand generations of blessing because of it. We are walking in a thousand generations of blessing because our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Israel... Moses, David, they believed God, and because they believed God, we are getting the blessing today. God never relents. God never repents. He always fulfills his word. We see how Jesus Christ himself, book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, the genealogy of Jesus Christ. He came through the sinful clan of King David and Bathsheba, Solomon, through Boaz, and Ruth, who is a Moabite, through Rahab, who is a harlot, through a sinful generation, Jesus Christ came and was born into this world. Why? Because God never relents. God never repents. God never changes. 
Hallelujah. This is the God that you can count on for the blessing in your life. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55, verse 3, God made the covenant of light with King David. Even Solomon, he fell short of the glory of God, but the same way, but God continued his covenant. And through our lives, book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 12, verse 14, we are the children of the light. We are the light and the salt because of God's promise, Isaiah 55, verse 3, for the covenant with King David. God is still fulfilling through our lives who believe Jesus Christ today. We are the children of Abraham and the lineage of David. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our God, Jesus Christ, who never relents, who never repents, who no matter what the sin, what the situation in your life, you can say, my God, who never lies, will bless me. My God, who never relents, who never repents, he will bless me in my life. Hallelujah. Precious people of God, third thing, my God will bless you. God who will never allow his word to fail. Psalm 146, verse 6, when we put our trust in God, he will give that same power, the power of Jesus Christ, to your tongue. John 14, 12, he said, greater works would we do. You have the same power because God will not allow his word to fail. When you believe God, 1 Samuel 3, 19, not one word you speak will fall to the ground. Psalm 119, verse 89, he will establish the things on earth that are established in heaven when you speak the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, he will hasten his word unto you. Hallelujah. We see in the book of Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, Isaiah 45, verse 23, in both the places, God said, he said, my word has gone out in righteousness. I have sworn by myself, my word, is not gone, my word has gone out in righteousness. It will not return void. He said, whatever my word has gone out, it will accomplish. Hallelujah. When we speak the word of God, it will not return void. When we speak the blessings and the promises of God, it will happen in your life when you believe God, when you trust your God, Jesus Christ. He will fulfill it. You can trust your God who will never allow his word to fail. Amen? The Bible says, Psalm 107, verse 20, he will send his word and he will heal you. Proverbs 3, 8, his word is marrow to the bone, strength to your body. Proverbs 4, 22, his word will bring the healing to your body. Precious child of God, we see in the book of Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 8, we see there's a centurion and he comes to Jesus and he says, my servant is sick. And Jesus says, I will come and I'll, I'll heal him. I'll pray for him and he'll be healed. And this servant, this centurion, he looks to Jesus. And he says, I'm a man of authority. When I say to a man, come, he comes. When I say to a man, go, he goes. Same way as you have the authority, Jesus, you need not come to my house. Simply say the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus marveled at this man's faith. And at that very hour, according to the word, because of the faith, Jesus healed that man. Precious child of God, God will never make his word to fail. When you continuously speak the word of God, all the blessing will come upon you. You can say, my God, who will never make his word to fail will bless you. Amen? I tell you today, child of God, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, we cannot be conformed to the world. We must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. What does it mean? It means we need to start speaking like I'm speaking today. Instead of speaking all the things of the world, millions of books, everything to follow, all the self-help, everything you can think of, but the truth is, all your answers are right in front of you in the Word of God. Start to read, learn, indwell the Word of your God into your heart. Child of God, we must transform our minds. Our spirit must be renewed. The Holy Spirit, Hebrews 12, verse 9, is the father of our spirit. We must constantly speak to our soul. Psalm 42, verse 5. Why be downcast, O my soul? Why be disturbed within me? Put your trust in God. 
precious child of God. This day, begin to speak to your mind and be renewed in your mind. Speak to your spirit. Speak to your body. Speak to your soul. The word of God, because the word of God will not fail. I tell you right now, child of God, my God, who cannot lie, will bless you. My God, who will not relent, who will not repent, will bless you. My God, who never makes his word to fail, he will bless you. Begin to think in this way. I encourage you today, child of God, and my God, Jesus Christ, your God, he will bless you. Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you could ask, think, or imagine. Be blessed this day, child of Jesus Christ, child of God. I encourage you, walk in faith. My God will bless you. I want to share this testimony with you of two parents, Jose and Diane, and their son, Alex. They were parents that were struggling with rebellion and an out-of-control child. Watch this testimony and be encouraged, child of God. You need not go through five and ten years of counseling and suffering. You can come unto the presence of the throne room of Jesus Christ because the Bible says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. This family, they did not know the full truth when the son and the parents came into the truth of God and received the power of God. Watch what happens, the immediate change and the peace that Jesus brought into their family. The same peace, Jehovah Shalom, that came unto them is available for you and your family. Be encouraged. Welcome to the show. Diane, why don't you start and tell us just a little bit about what was happening in your family. There was just a like a defiance going on. You know, every time we would ask Alex to do something, he maybe just didn't want to do it. And it, it just was kind of like a, no, I'm not going to. He would say, if, if you say it's daytime, no, it's nighttime. If you say it's one, no, it's two. And, you know, same with the school. You want to do your homework, uh, no, I'm done already. Or things of that nature. What did you feel when your parents or people would tell you you're acting rebellious or things like that? You, did you believe it or did you think that wasn't true? I thought that wasn't true. I, I thought it was just fine and everything that I was doing was perfect. Um, we decided as a family to um, come and talk to you and have prayer. And that's when the Lord revealed to you that there was a generational curse. For about two generations back on my side of the family. Now, God has revealed this so that we can be aware of the generational curse, that we can pray against it, and because of Jesus Christ and his salvation on the cross that he has died to give us when he rose again from the dead, what happens is, is we need not complain that that's the lot in our life. Instead, we can be aware of these generational curses. When he reveals it, we pray against it, and the power of the Holy Spirit can break that and take that off of our life and instantly set us free. After I told him about our conversation and our prayer, he just kind of felt like a relief. You know, like, well, maybe this isn't just me. You know, maybe something is wrong. Like, I'm acting this way, but it's not me. What did you think when your mom told you that? Uh, I thought uh, it would be able to be lifted off my shoulders and that I wouldn't have to deal with it anymore. So you decided to come as a family, and Alex had the courage to come and get prayer. And we, as we started praying, it was just like a, a lifting. You could just feel it lift right off mm -hmm. of us. Tremendous. Now, I, Alex, what could you feel? I felt like uh, some spirit was being uh, taken out of me, and that Lord was with me. After praying with you, when we were home, you can see the change on him right away. Instantly. Instantly. So you didn't have to wait and go through a ton exactly. of counseling or anything? No. And Thursday, I get a call from the principal of the school, and she says, I need to speak with you about Alex. And immediately, I just thought, oh, 
oh no. Here we go You again. know, yes. Oh. And she said, I just want to tell you that something has happened to him. There's just been a wonderful change in him. His attitude is completely different. You're feeling free in your life today? Yes, I am. And you feel different? Mm-hmm. Who healed you? Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ will heal you and set you free. Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Israel, oh God, you are high and lifted up, eternal God. We worship and praise you and come before your throne of grace and mercy, not because we're good and righteous, but because of your tender mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we declare today that you are the God who never lies. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right now in the lives of every pe person listening, in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing of Jesus Christ, fall upon your life today, bringing the transformation to your mind. Oh God, the way you open the mind of the disciples to know your word, Luke 24, 45, open the minds of everyone one of your children listening today, that they might hear the word of your grace, Lord Jesus Christ, that they would not listen to the voice of the enemy that has been messing with their minds for too long, and instead hear the word of God and rise up. As God is saying to you today, child of God, Isaiah 52, verse 1 and 2, I have cut the bands off of your life, cut off the band of sin, the band of oppression, the band of depression, the band of confusion. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. Up, shake off the dust. You are the child of the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and who will bless you. For the Lord is saying to you today, I am the Lord your God, and I do not lie. My promises are yes and amen. Whatever you've done in the past does not matter. Rise up for the glory of God. Believe the word of God. Believe in Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, the anointing of Jesus Christ, flow in your life right now. Resurrection power of God, come upon you every sickness be healed every discouragement be broken all the generational curses are broken off of your life today for you to walk forward in glory and in truth he who knows the truth lord jesus christ will be free thank you lord jesus christ for touching their lives today for encouraging their hearts be with them bless them be glorified be high and lifted up in their lives today in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, we bless all God's people. Hallelujah. May the love of the Father God, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, fellowship and unity of the Holy Spirit rest with each and every one of you this entire week and until Jesus Christ comes again. God bless you and we'll see you next week. The gospel is the power. Make his Make straight his path there.